In this video, I'm going to talk about something that I call refactor culture. Uh, you'll see the introduction video as well as the best moments of the discussion. If you want to join the discussion and share your opinion, go to flipgrid.com slash Cassiozen. So I decided to start this, this space, this public discussion with a subject that I've been thinking a lot lately. And I think it's one of the key indicators of what makes a good code base and also what makes a good developer. And I call it refactor culture. So what is refactor culture? When most people think about refactor, uh, they think about something that happens separately, something that happens as a separate task, right? Uh, if I have a task to do something, uh, that task usually involving, involves me coding, get to a working code point, maybe adding some tests and done and expect that the, 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 the company, that the, the leadership will someday give you time to the refactor and pay your technical debts and reorganize things. But here's the thing. Well, that's never gonna happen, right? We can make a separate video how, about how to carve space uh, uh, for working on the, uh, on the code base and not shipping features. We can say, we can create uh, a discussion around that later. But uh, refactorage is not something that should be detached from your daily work. I recently made a video on, on YouTube and I will link. And one, at one point I said that working code is not enough. Uh, that a, a good software engineer should, as they get to the working code, uh, immediately refactor it and, and see if it, that code should live, uh, can be restructured in a, in a way that it's more readable later uh, if it and think if it should live on that place if it should live somewhere else and etc and refactor culture is not only refactor as you write code it's all of it it's refactoring as you write code as refactoring as a separate task is carving time to clean your code base later refactor culture is incorporating refactor as something that happens constantly early and at all levels from a single commit to a separate space uh, exclusively to, to clean your code. I agree with your idea that refactoring should be an uh, ongoing thing. Why? Because uh, developers are the only people who have skins in the game and not the PMs, not the business owner, because developers are the ones who will end up paying the technical debt. To that... give you a more concrete example, this is Vitest. Vitest is a testing library, testing framework API compatible with Jest uh, for Vite, uh, which is a, a module bundler for, for JavaScript applications. And it's created by many open source authors, uh, mostly by Anthony Fu, which is a genius developer. And just to give you an example, this is uh, a few releases days apart in the search folder. This is what it looked like uh, on version 0 .0 0.0.14. Uh, two versions later, you see that things are already changing. The folder names are already changing. A few days later, less files. <laughs> a few releases later, we have even less files, which is uh, uh, crazy, right? You're adding code, but in less files, then another restructure with more folders and so on and so forth. Uh, if we search, and these are not specific refactor commits. These refactors are just happening as they were developing as they were creating new features they realized that these features would be uh, uh, would be better fit to live in a separate folder so create the folder by the way if i'm creating the folder i might as well move these other pieces over here uh if i search specifically for uh refactor commits commits are specific for refactors there are also plenty of those so going back to the point it's not about doing one or the other. Refactor culture is about doing refactor always as part of your code, as a separate task. Uh, uh, it, it's just part of your where you work. How do you start then? Yeah, I think this is a super interesting topic. Uh, refactor culture and how to build and maintain a legacy or a long living product. Um, I just finished reading Kill It With Fire by Marianne Bellotti. Um, it was a super interesting book. A lot of it was about um, legacy migrations and bringing legacy software up to speed. And then the end, as you can see in the kind of by topic, um, future proofing modern ones was super important. 
but it talks a lot of, at the beginning about that um, that mythical rewrite. Like if I could just greenfield this project or start it from the bottom up, it'd be so much better. I could fix all the problems and we'd be set for the future. Um, and how that's often a trap. And that the better way is to really just focus on that refactor culture you were talking about, the making little improvements as you work on parts of the product. Um, and kind of as Shao talked about, like things change and all of a sudden you have complexities and you need to reduce that complexity and streamline your system. One of the most traditional books is Refactoring. Uh, this is by uh, this is the second edition. It's by Martin Fowler. Which it's one of the most traditional and well-regarded books about refactoring. And the second edition was rewritten from Java to JavaScript. Uh, so it's an absolutely accessible book uh, to read right now. So now I ask you, is refactoring something that is part of your coding practice? Uh, do you have any other tips about how do you refactor? Uh, any other thoughts or, or resources to share? Let's discuss.